Hey everyone, this is John from Motionworks, and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the MovieType 2.0 presets. We've packed new creative features into MovieType with brand new backgrounds, a huge material library, a dust tool, a grid and a tunnel tool, plus loads of new presets. And MovieType has been updated and optimized, and now works in Cinema 4D R15, 16 and 17. And it's faster than ever to use. So let's take a look. If I tool open MovieType, you can see I have tools and presets. And when we were designing MovieType, the idea was to create a large range of presets that you could use to quickly create great looking type animations in Cinema 4D. And that's what we did. But in order to do that, we had to create a range of tools that made building those presets much easier. But I suggest when you're using MovieType, start with the presets, take a good look at those because you might find something that gets you all of the way there or even half the way there, and then you can modify that. But it's certainly not wrong to start with the tools. And in the tutorials following this, I walk through all of the tools individually. So you'll have a really good idea of how to use those. But let's just jump into the presets. You can see we have type presets, camera presets, materials, lighting presets, scene presets, graphic element presets, and full scenes. Let's start with the type presets. There's now over 150 different type presets and we've put new additional presets in most of the categories. And we've also included a brand new slide category. And many of these looks are based on the type animations I created for movie type for Element 3D. Did a lot of work in Element 3D creating type looks. But of course, Cinema 4D has its own unique tools, things like Dynamics and Spring. And these don't look exactly like the ones in Element 3D. Some of them look even better than those ones do. We also have a number of camera presets using the camera arc, camera dolly, camera helix and camera rectangle tools. And these presets can be used on their own for impactful camera moves like these ones. Or you can combine them with the type presets for something even more dynamic. We've created a library of over 450 materials and variations for movie type 2.0. And we've replaced the old material tool. We found the material tool in version 1 was a little bit limiting and also very slow to render. And in place of that, we've included this huge library of materials. And once again, many of these are based on the materials that we created for movie type for Element 3D. And for R16 and 17 users, all of these materials have been updated to take advantage of the reflectance channel. Beneath that, we have the lighting presets. In there, we have three point lighting presets. And we've added 10 new three point lighting setups to this list, giving you more creative options. Plus we have a set of light sweep presets for adding sweeping light and volumetric light effects. There's a total of 27 brand new background presets and all of these backgrounds use displacement. So some wonderful organic and geometric looks in there. We also have a brand new dust tool and a range of different dust presets. Great for adding depth to your scenes. And these look fantastic when you're using the physical camera and depth of field. Next we have the reflective sky presets. And you can use these to quickly add some punchy reflections to your objects. We have a range of grid presets and tunnel presets. And these are super useful for adding dynamic geometric elements to your scenes without having to start from scratch using MoGraph. And the last category is full scenes. And these are finished looks we've created for you combining a range of different movie type tools. We've also added new looks in movie type 2.0, which take advantage of all of the new tools. As with the other presets, you can use these as they are or as a starting point, but they're also good to deconstruct to see how you can combine the movie type tools to create different looks. Okay, so now let's finish off by looking at how easy and fast it can be to create a look using these movie type presets. The first thing we wanna do is apply some type to the scene. So I'm gonna choose a cascade preset and you can preview any of the thumbnails by clicking on it and coming down here in the preview panel, and just clicking play. That'll give you a good idea of how it looks. So I'm going to double click that one to add that to the scene. Come over to objects. And if you open up the null, you can see there's movie type text setup extrude. And that's what we have in the scene by default. There's also a movie type text setup mo text and that's turned off. So if you prefer to use mo text, you can just switch off the extrude and switch on the mo text. For now, I'm going to use extrude. Let's add a camera to the scene. So once again, come across to the presets and Double click camera presets. I'm gonna go into camera helix and I'm gonna choose camera helix 01. Let's just preview that one. It's got a nice angle on it and a little bit of rotation. 
Nothing too fancy, but it should really complement this cascade look. Now if I come over to cameras and choose use camera, MT camera helix, we're now looking through that camera. Okay, so that's looking good, but I think the cascade could be a little faster. So once again, I'm going to come back over to objects, click on MT cascade 01, and click on movie type position control. Come down to my controls, and I just want to decrease the duration. Make that 1.2. Okay, that's good. Now the cascade's happening just a little bit faster. Looking good. Okay, let's apply some materials. Once again, coming across to the content browser, and this time, let's give myself some more space here. Double clicking on materials. Now, as I mentioned, there's a load of materials here. I'm gonna come down to material number 42 and double click 4201, because I want some white and I want some black and some red. First of all, I'm gonna drag the black onto the text and I want the front face to be red. So we can use invisible selections for that. So if I drag the red on as well and just click on the tag and under selection, I'm gonna type in C1 for cap number one. And now we have a red cap. I also wanna give it a white rounding. So once again, if I drag that onto the fracture text, this time I'm gonna choose R1 for rounding one. Okay, so now I have black text with a red cap and a white rounding. That's looking pretty flat at the moment. So let's start thinking about lighting. Once again, come back to the content browser and just make myself some space here. Come into lighting presets. I'm gonna use three point lighting presets. Now for this one, I'm gonna choose MT 3.14. Okay, starting to get a little bit of blue in there, which is nice. It obviously needs some reflections as well. But first of all, let's put a background in. So I'm gonna come down to scene presets, double click on background presets. And for this one, I want something fairly geometric. So MT background 07. Okay, that's looking good. It's obviously a little bit small. So once again, come over to objects, make sure that's selected, come down to attributes. And under my main control, I'm gonna change the width. Just drag that out. That's looking good. Also needs a material, so I'm just gonna drag that white onto this. Okay, so very quickly you can see we're starting to get a really nice look. We've got a little bit of shadowing and we've got some nice reflections from those materials but those reflections could definitely be a little more punchy. So that's where we can use the reflective sky. So once again, come back to content browser and come down to scene presets, reflective sky. I'm just gonna choose movie type reflective sky 01 because I want this nice reflection on the front face. Double click, ah, looking good. Now we've got that lovely reflection across the front face of the type, but you can also see it's reflecting on the background and we can fix that just come back to objects, click on reflective sky. And you can see down here at the bottom where it says reflection control, there's an option to exclude reflective sky in. I want to exclude the reflective sky in the background. So all I have to do is drag the background and drop it in there and preview. And now I've excluded that reflection in the background. So it's as simple as that. And that's looking really nice. Now, if you wanted something a little more dynamic, you could replace the background with perhaps a grid preset. So if I come across the content browser and come down to, where are we? Graphic element presets, come to grid presets. And let's see, I like the blockiness, but I want something a little more dynamic. So maybe if I chose this very first one, MT grid 01, looking good. Just double click that one, come back to objects and just drag the material onto there. Let's preview that. Now that's looking really good. To finish off, let's just try an MT tunnel preset in place of the grid. Once again, come back to the content browser and come down to tunnel presets. This one I'm gonna try MT Tunnel 08, because I like this star look. And you can see by default, that's right in front of the text. Just gotta make a couple of adjustments. It's a good idea to add your camera 
into the scene before you add these backgrounds because you need to make adjustments sometimes like this. So come over to objects, click on MT Tunnel 08. Once again, come down to the controls and under main control, I want to move this on the Z. I'm going to move it behind the text like that. That's looking good, but obviously it's way too small. So now I've got to change the size of this. I'm also going to decrease the rounding to zero because rounding looks really nice on the geometry, but it can be very slow. So just a warning there. Let's just change the size. Just make that nice and big so it fills most of the frame. Something like that. And that should be just right. Now oh, that's looking really nice. Those tunnel presets give you that really nice detailed geometric background without having to do all the work in MoGraph up front. Okay, so that's it for the presets. Go ahead, jump in and take a look. In the next tutorial, we'll take a look at the MovieType text setup tools.